everyone. Thank you for joining me. My name is Aya. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm a presenter here at the California Academy of Sciences. And today, we get to do two fun science experiments all about an important challenge facing our ocean systems today called ocean acidification. So we'll learn all about that. But first, has anyone out there ever been to the ocean? Maybe seen a picture of it? Yeah, I bet some of us. Well, it is a beautiful place to be, and it's a really important part of our planet, these ocean systems. They drive our climate, the patterns of weather over long periods of time. They house a huge amount of biodiversity, and they also interact with everything around them, including the air and the land. In fact, oceans absorb an enormous amount of carbon dioxide from our atmosphere. Has anyone ever heard of carbon dioxide or CO2 before? Maybe some of us? Well, as animals, we release carbon dioxide into our environment when we breathe out. That's part of the normal carbon cycling here on Earth. But when factories and cars burn fossil fuels like coal, oil, and natural gas, it releases a lot more CO2 than we do when we breathe. And all of that extra CO2 builds up into a heat trapping blanket around the Earth, and that causes our climate to change and it also means that the ocean is gonna absorb a lot more carbon dioxide. And when that happens, that extra CO2 mixes with the water and forms carbonic acid, a common type of acid that you can find in soda, seltzer water, but that small change has a really big impact. We're gonna dive into it with our first experiment where we'll learn a little bit more about what an acid is in the first place. So let's see. All liquids are either acids or bases or they're in the middle. They're what we call neutral and they fall somewhere on the pH scale. That pH scale tells you whether that liquid is an acid or a base or neutral. And where a liquid falls on this pH scale Ha has a big impact on what happens to the chemicals that might be dissolved in that water, the salts, the minerals. And that's really important for wildlife. But we'll get to that later. First, let's test out some of these common household substances to see whether they are acids or bases. But we can't really tell just by looking. So we're gonna have the help of a pH indicator. This is red cabbage juice and it's actually going to change color depending on whether the liquid that it's added to is an acid or a base. So let's see what happens. Let's try first a liquid that we know is an acid. Okay, this is vinegar. Oh, it smells pretty strong, sour. Now let's see what happens when we add our pH indicator to it. You ready? Okay, you can count with me. One, two, three. Oh, okay. So here's the color it started out as, deep purple. What do you think? Did it change color? Sure did. It turned this bright pink. All right. Well, that means that when we add our indicator, to something that's acidic, it's gonna turn pink. How about a liquid that we know is a base? Let's see what happens when we add the indicator to this baking soda mixed in water. Now, baking soda is a base. So what do you think? Will it change color? Will it be the same color? You think it'll turn pink? It'll turn a different color? Let's find out. Okay, one, two, three. Oh, interesting. All right, so it didn't turn pink, 
we'll turn this bright blue. Well, now we know that our indicator turns blue when mixed with a base and pink when mixed with an acid. All right, now we're ready to test out some of these other liquids. We can see whether those are acids or bases. Will the indicator turn them blue for base or pink for acid? Let's start with this one. I bet you might tell, be able to tell what this is. It's bubbly, we use it to wash our hands. Yeah, it's soapy water. So what do we think? Soapy water gonna be an acid or a base? I think it's gonna turn blue or pink. Let's see. Ah, well, it definitely changed color. What do you notice? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it turned blue, all right. So what do you think, acid or base? I think so too. I think that soapy water must be a base then. Our indicator turned it blue. Okay, let's try another liquid. This one over here, huh, it smells pretty fragrant. Also kind of sour, comes from a fruit that's yellow and grows on the tree. Yeah, it's lemon juice. Okay, what do you think? Is lemon juice gonna be an acid or a base? Let's find out. All right, ready? One, two, three. All right, is it pink for acid or blue for base? Yeah, turn this bright pink. Okay, so lemon juice is an acid. It's on the acidic side of the pH scale. How about these ones in the middle? Hmm, let's see, okay. Over here, we have fresh tap water, pure tap water. Let's add our pH indicator and see what happens. What do you all think? Do you think it's gonna be acidic or basic? Do you think maybe it's gonna be neither? All right, let's find out. Ready? One, two, three. Huh. What color is it? Yeah, still kind of purple. So did it really change color much at all? No, not really. So that must mean that pure water is neutral. It's not an acid and it's not a base. So that's why it didn't change the pH indicator's color at all. It's somewhere in the middle. But how about this one? This is not just water, this is salt water. So similar to what's in our oceans. What do you think? Is the salt water gonna be neutral also? Is it gonna stay purple or is it gonna change a color? Let's find out. Okay, ready? One, two, three. <gasps> Interesting. Okay, what do you all notice? Is it purple like the neutral tap water? No, not quite. It did turn a little bit blue. So what does that mean? Is the salt water acidic or neutral or basic? Yeah, I think the salt water is slightly basic. Now that's important when we think about ocean acidification because it means that our ocean water, salt water, is gonna start out a little bit on the basic side of the pH scale. And then as extra CO2 is absorbed and carbonic acid is formed, it's gonna push it more towards the acidic side. Now, we had mentioned before that where a liquid falls on the pH scale has a big impact on what happens to the minerals, the salts, any chemicals that might be dissolved in that liquid. And that's exactly what happens in the case of ocean acidification. When the pH of the ocean changes, it has a big impact, particularly on this mineral calcium carbonate that's dissolved in the ocean water. Now, animals like crabs and clams, anything with a shell, they build those strong shells 
out of that mineral calcium carbonate. It's also inside of our own bones. However, when the ocean becomes more acidic and carbonic acid forms, that carbonic acid snaps up a whole lot of the carbonate part of calcium carbonate. And that makes it so that there's less calcium carbonate for clams to build their shells out of. They have a harder time getting that material and they aren't able to build shells that are as strong. And what do you think might happen to a clam if it doesn't have a strong shell? Yeah, I think it might have a hard time surviving without this important protection. And if clams and crabs are having a harder time surviving, well, that means that any animal that eats them, including humans, has less food to eat as well. So this is how impacts from ocean acidification actually ripple out across entire food webs, impacting ecosystems and human communities. But you don't have to take my word for it that the ocean becomes more acidic when it absorbs CO2. That's actually something we can demonstrate also. We've got a little model ocean here. You can see it's blue because I've already added our pH indicator. So it's showing that this water is a little bit basic right now, but I am going to pretend to be a factory and I'm gonna add a lot of extra CO2 into this model ocean. Now, I'd like you all to keep a careful eye on the color of the pH indicator. We're wondering, when we add extra CO2 to the ocean, does it really make it more acidic? Well, we can tell by keeping a close eye on the color of the indicator. If it starts to turn more pink, that'll mean that the mixture is becoming more acidic as I add that extra CO2. All right, should we try it out? Okay, you all keep a close look. I'll add the CO2. notice anything yet? Okay, I just blew a whole lot of extra CO2 into this mixture. Let's take a look at the color. What do you notice? Is it still that bright blue? Yeah, I think it changed color. It's a lot more purple now. So it moved from the blue of the basic side and shifted towards the acidic side, becoming more pink. First it would travel through the purple colors, and then if I added some lemon juice to it, maybe it would turn bright pink. Now, that CO2 that I added, it didn't make a huge difference in the liquid's pH, but again, even those small changes have really big impacts on water chemistry and what happens to those minerals that crabs and clams need in order to make strong shells. So we just completed some fun science activities. Let's recap. We learned that when we burn fossil fuels like coal, oil, and natural gas, 
it releases a whole lot of extra carbon dioxide into our atmosphere, which gets absorbed by our ocean and mixes with water to create carbonic acid. That's known as ocean acidification. And when the water becomes more acidic, it holds on to that carbonate from calcium carbonate and makes it harder for clams and crabs to get that calcium carbonate they need for their shells. But luckily, there's also a lot that we can do to cut down on that extra carbon dioxide and to cut down on the fossil fuels that we use. We can rethink the energy that we use. What if instead of fossil fuels, we used renewable energy like wind and solar? What if we rethink the way that we get around, working with our communities to build bike lanes? Now, all of this is gonna take a lot of work and great ideas from minds like yours. So please go out and talk to your friends and family about the importance of our ocean systems, about some of the challenges like ocean acidification that they're facing, and about things that we can do for help. And let us know if you come up with any great ideas. <laughs> In the meantime, if you'd like to try this experiment out at home, you can find instructions on our website at calacademy.org for our ocean acidification experiments. Thank you so much for joining us, and we hope to see you again soon.